Welcome back to the End Time Remnant YouTube channel. This is Dorothy and today is August 18th, 2023. In this video, I wanted to take some time to encourage those of you who are subscribed to this channel to pay very close attention to the sign of the times in which we are living. So as much as many of us are expecting to see blessings of the Lord manifest in our lives, in this season, we should be equally watchful for the end time events that are leading up to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I felt led to make this video because so many of these preachers, teachers, apostles, bishops, prophets are refusing to talk about the difficult times ahead. They are refusing to warn the people. They are refusing to tell the people of God to repent for the kingdom of God is at hand, right? The message of repentance and turning to Christ for real is not popular. So they tend to stick with sermons that talk about blessings, miracles, wealth transfers, and the desires of our hearts, none of which have anything to do with the pure, unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ, but they peddle it nonetheless, right? It's almost as though they're doing their part to keep the body of Christ dumbed down so that we will not be ready for prime time, okay? And I do believe it is prime time. As the church, we cannot afford to be ignorant of the times in which we are living, Okay, and unless you live underneath a rock or are on a secluded island, it is impossible to miss the increasing darkness that is covering the earth. There is coming a time when the lost will begin to search high and low for salvation. Okay, their money is going to fail them. Their connections are going to fail them. All of the things that they have worshipped all their lives instead of Jesus Christ will fail them and they will be in need of the light of Christ church we need to be ready to serve the lost and share the gospel but the question i have for you is how can you do that if you are not deeply rooted in christ you have got to be deeply rooted yourself in order to help someone else all right when it rains it never just rains on one man's house so in my mind while i don't believe the coming judgments will harm the church i do believe they will affect the church right even if it's second hand um, one of the things I know for sure, obviously I do not have dates. I do not know the hour nor the day, but I know that war is coming to the United States of America. God has shown me that already and he's not a liar. And if you are part of the church and live in the United States of America, does the war just happen around your house? You understand what I'm saying? Are you completely untouched by what is going on in the land? Make sense of that, right? We need to know how to serve the lost even in the chaos, even as chaos is around us. As things change drastically uh, in terms of um, our everyday living, we need to be ready to serve God's people. In order to do that, your faith cannot solely be dependent on encouraging or prophetic words that you receive from YouTube pages or um, the pastor of your local church, you have got to know the word of God for yourself and be in personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the only way this church is going to be effective in these end times is if, if the personal relationship with Christ is able to shine through. There's coming a time where we may not have the luxury of the internet anymore. And I think so many of us are so used to just picking up our phones and being able to scroll through social media and call people here and go here and go there and get in our cars and go as we please. Listen, there are a lot of changes coming down the pike. We may not have the luxury of the internet anymore, right? There may be another pandemic of sorts where people are instructed to stay home and as a result cannot attend church in person. Some of these churches may actually close their doors for good due to financial issues when the economy goes haywire. Who knows? Who knows? You have got to be in a place where you know the voice of the Lord for yourself. You have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and can encourage yourself in the Lord. And you also have, have to have enough faith to share with the lost who are going to be desiring to know him as well. You know, the Lord is going to expect us to help him draw in the end time harvest. When I obeyed the Lord and started this YouTube channel, I was very intentional about what I would call this page. I didn't want to name it after myself like most people do because this page wasn't about me. 
I chose the end time remnant because that is precisely who I felt called to serve and edify. People who know what time it is. People who understand beyond a shadow of a doubt that we are living in the end times and we have work to do in order to help draw in the end time harvest of souls. Okay, let's go to scripture for a moment. Matthew 24, 3 through 14 reads, As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pangs. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. So let's do the checklist, right? He talked about wars and rumors of wars. There is currently so much going on globally that one would have to live under a rock to not see that war is on the horizon. And I don't mean war between this country and that country. I mean some old World War Three type stuff. There's just way too much going on right now for peace to reign. <laughs> okay. He also talks about nation rising against nation. This means race wars, civil wars, nationality against nationality. Everywhere you look, you can see the racial divide here in the United States of America. Okay, this country looks like it is on the verge of imploding. We've tried so very hard to pretend racism doesn't exist and seething hatred does not exist, but it does and nothing good can come of this. Right. Kingdom against kingdom. This means global conflict, country against country. We are obviously seeing much of this. Now, I recognize a lot of you may sit in front of the television screen. I'm speaking to those of you who live in the United States of America and you may watch mainstream media often. They are literally controlled by the devil and they are a bunch of liars. A lot of what you need to know, you won't even see on CNN and you won't even see on MSNBC. OK, you got to actually go out of your way to get the truth because you're not going to get it from mainstream media. But here's what I can tell you. The United States of America is fast becoming the redheaded stepchild that no one wants to play with on the global stage. All this superpower talk of how we are the most powerful nation on the globe. Listen here. <laughs> listen here. Times are a change in. And I'm just going to leave that there. Times are a changing. Right. The Lord also talks about famines. We are definitely seeing this in certain parts of the world, and I have no doubt that it will one day hit the United States of America as well. Okay? They're doing a lot to our food. <laughs> Earthquakes. We are seeing these happen consistently in different parts of the earth. Total destruction. These hurricanes, these tor tornadoes, all this crazy weather um, that's going on, a lot of it unpredicted, right? Right? Um, a lot of it just popping up, even though we have all this new technology. Um, it's just very bizarre. Followers of Christ being hated, persecuted, and some even put to death. We are definitely seeing this. This is, this is, this is not hard to see, right? Those with, with, with spiritual eyes, those with natural eyes can see this. People turning away from the faith and hating each other. I see it all the time. I see it all the time. People are turning away from Christ and turning to witchcraft and turning to um, the Muslim faith and turning to this faith and turning to that faith. They're turning away from what they were once um, rooted in. False prophets everywhere deceiving people. I've made way too many videos about that right? Wickedness and the love of many growing cold. Listen, if you're on YouTube often, 
right? All these videos that sometimes pop up in your um, feed, these random videos, like you can just see all of the wickedness. It's on full display. Even though you may try to avoid it, it's there for you to see. All of this is happening right now. Very wicked things are being done behind the scenes as humanity is being lulled to sleep with distractions of all kinds. And while many of you don't want to talk about the end times or what is yet to come, I can tell you that it doesn't matter what corner of the earth you live in. Judgment is on the way. The book of Revelation is very clear. Right? Let's go back to scripture. Luke 17, 26 through 30 reads, And as it was in the days of Noah, so it will also be in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. <laughs> but on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so, it will be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. This passage of scripture is very sobering and it says, as in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the son of man. Basically, just like in the days of Noah, when the flood came from out of seemingly nowhere, right? And everyone except Noah and his family perished. It will be the same at the return of Christ. What are people going to be doing? Well, they're going to be living their best lives, right? They're going to be living their best lives. They're going to be living unapologetically. They're going to be doing what they feel like doing. They're going to be eating. They're going to be drinking. They're going to be high. They're going to be fornicating, right? They're going to be depending on their money. They're going to be buying and selling. They're going to be planting. They're going to be building, right? Business as usual until it's not. Until it's not. And what was going on during the days of Noah? Almost all of humanity had gone mad, the world had reached a peak of sinfulness. In fact, the Bible says the wickedness was so great that God was regretful that he even created mankind. Can you imagine what God had to have witnessed from his throne in order to feel regretful that he even made us? My genuine question is, what do you think he feels today? We are indeed in the days of Noah, where society has gone crazy and ungodliness is the norm. We are in the days where they call evil good and good evil. But I feel like it's been taken up a whole nother notch these days. You know, King Solomon says there's nothing new under the sun, but, you know, I wonder if humanity has taken wickedness up a few notches. What are we looking at? We're looking at homosexual marriages. We're looking at transgender adults and children. They're coming, they, they're coming after the children. They're coming after the children. Story time with, with transgender people at the school. Perversion of every kind that you can think. The fornication, the abortions, the adultery. The ungodly addictions that people absolutely refuse to come out of. The idolatry of celebrities. People paying hundreds of dollars for one ticket to go see their idol perform. And yet when there's a financial collapse, they'll wish to God they hadn't been so cavalier with their coins. The godlessness, the outright hatred toward God. The hirelings in the pulpit who intentionally deceive God's people. The greed, the murder, the child sex trafficking, the child abuse, the child porn. Talk about the bio warfare, the things that they're doing behind the scenes to kill off humanity by poisoning our food, our water, and our air supply. Oh yeah, I'm talking about it today. Because I feel like if the church isn't careful, we will spend way too much time and get caught up in looking for blessings that we aren't focused on what matters most, and that is eternity and helping to draw as many lost souls to Christ as we possibly can before it's too late. The signs of the times are in plain sight. There is no way God hasn't had his fill 
of what is going on down here. And because people have been talking about the end times for such a long time, the mockers and spiritually ignorant seem to think it will never happen. They just don't understand. Okay, Second Peter 3, 9 reads, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God knows how awful an eternity in hell would be. He doesn't desire that any of us go there. So he has been very patient with humanity. However, church, we should not trample upon his patience, but instead be ever ready for what is to come. Constantly repenting of our sin, constantly in the secret place seeking him, constantly praying, worshiping, praising, fasting as led. Listen, years ago, as I was in prayer, I remember hearing this phrase. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. And I heard it very clearly, but I didn't understand what it meant or what the Lord was trying to say to me. So I looked it up online and it happened to be the opening of a book written by author Charles Dickens called The Tale of Two Cities. It described a time when a lot of polarizing things were happening concurrently. Right. Matter of fact, let me read it to you. Hold on a second. It says it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. We had everything before us. We had nothing before us. We were all going direct to heaven. We were all going direct the other way. In short, the period was so far like the present period that some of its noisiest authorities insisted on its being received for good or for evil in the superlative degree of comparison only. So let's run this back. You got the best, you got the worst during this time. You got wisdom, you got foolishness. You got belief, you got incredulity, which simply means um, the state of being unwilling or unable to believe something. You have light, you have darkness, you have hope, you have despair. Everything was before us, nothing was before us. Some going direct to heaven, some direct the other way. Some people would be experiencing one thing while other people were experiencing something completely different. Some, the latter reign of God's promises fulfilled while other people would be experiencing his righteous judgment. Brothers and sisters, I believe that time is now. I believe that time is now. A beautiful shift for some and a gavel of judgment for others. One last thing I want to share with you. Perhaps it was about three years ago now. I like to do um, prayer walks often. So one day as I was walking, I began to pray silently. And I asked the Lord to share his heart with me. I wanted to know exactly what he wanted me to know. I wanted to know what was up ahead for me. At that time in my life, there was such confusion and uncertainty. And honestly, I was hoping he would talk to me about a spouse, some babies, a new career track, a new move, something. Okay, so my prayer was basically, Lord, talk to me. You know, what do you want me to know? What's on your heart? You know, what can you tell me about what's up ahead for me? That evening, the Lord gave me a quick vision. Okay, it was of a clock that was about to strike midnight and an old school oil lamp. When I awoke, I did not really understand what it meant. However, the Holy Spirit is faithful. It is his job to bring us into all truth. Okay, he is our teacher. He is our helper. So he took me to Matthew 25, which was the parable of the 10 virgins. Basically, in a nutshell, five of them kept oil in their lamps and the other five were playing games and ended up missing the bridegroom. Okay, God's message to me that night was to focus on keeping oil in my lamp. He wanted me to understand with no uncertainty that time of this age was almost up and that I shouldn't be prioritizing marriage, a new house, a new car, wealth transfers, a new business, or any of these other things. I needed to focus on my oil reserve. And what is the oil? 
right? What is the oil? The oil is the Holy Spirit's work within us, the anointing, the relationship we cultivate with the Lord through prayer, fasting, and intimacy in the secret place. It's the knowledge, it's the wisdom, it's the revelation we receive from spending quality time with him. God wanted me to focus on that. And I truly believe that is what he desires for all of us in the body of Christ to prioritize in these final hours. All these promises he is fulfilling during this time is just an added bonus. We cannot be so focused on the blessings that we forget what time it really is. Okay? So brothers and sisters, let us be sober. Not somber. Right? Not fearful. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. He wants us to be sober. He wants us to be vigilant. Let us be wise. Let us be intentional about building stronger relationships with the Lord and training our spiritual ears to hear him clearly. Because there's about to be some stuff popping off soon. And honestly, truth of the matter is, if you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, I'm not telling you anything new. You feel it. You know it spiritually. Um, you are being warned. So this really isn't like some, some new uh, revelation that I'm giving you. It's confirmation. It has to be confirmation. You have to feel that things are changing. Um, so that's really all I have for you. Um, I pray in the name of Jesus that this video reaches whomever it is. And I pray, you know, that if you are someone who needs to work on filling your lamp with oil, that you get about the business of doing that. Because um, nothing is more important than your relationship with Christ. And nothing is more important than you being eternity ready. And that's all I have for you today. I pray um, that you are blessed and God willing, I will see you next time.